The Communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Externally, you look the same nine years later. A little more settled looking, a little more tolerant of things, a little tired. But that's all they think. Inside are the ruins. Inside is the wreckage of loneliness and compromise and disappointment and fear. That's the price you pay for being, for nine years, a communist for the FBI, like me. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Wrong Green. I stumble out of Comrade Revchenko's office feeling like a guy who's just caught a live grenade and can't let go. All I can think of is get to a pay station and call my FBI contact and maybe he can get the stinger out. We arranged to meet at Rendezvous Green, currently a vacant garage away from things on the north side. It's a place where a case of jitters can smoke and paste the concrete and flip his lid a little until the memes go away. Rendezvous Green. High-class luggage they're going to supply me. And take my best clothes along, the man says. Take it easy, man. Take it easy? All they want me to do this time is commit a felony. All I'm supposed to do is pass a lot of counterfeit money at this plush resort. That's all. Simple. This could be a break for us, Matt. We've suspected the Reds of pouring counterfeit money into resorts where important foreign delegations are staying. Object? To undermine confidence in our exchange and in our government generally. Also, trade a little bad money for good. There's a Pan-American monetary conference going on at Glade of the Lakes. The Reds want you to riddle the place with bad currency. Well, what about the effect of those counterfeits on the foreign delegates? They've got a risk, Red, just this once more. Prevent it's ever happening again. Lots of people are going to get stuck with bad paper. We'll replace it with good bills. Be worth it. You game, Matt? Mm, I'm game, all right. And the season is wide open on me. I pack my best clothes and Comrade Revchenko promotes some nifty luggage for me. Also, an aircraft beacon type diamond ring. Don't ask me where the comrades got it. In the lobby, Matthew Savetic's luggage leads all the rest in class, dash, and quality. A young field marshal escorts me to my $18 room, where I'm supposed to relax in a pool of cold sweat and await further word from the party. I don't wait very long. Hi. I like her right away. Perhaps 20, pretty, appealing, forthright looking anyway. Friendly. She could be my kid sister. And in that two-second inventory, I find myself wishing fervently that she isn't a communist. I've brought you the envelope. Oh. Uh, come in, please. You are Mr. Savetic. Matthew Savetic. I'm Roberta King. People call me Bobby, though. What people? Oh, everybody. I have the envelope in my handbag. In here. Thanks. Uh, is that all? The father says you'll hear from him later. Or from me. Um, you? More than likely. Dad's so busy. He's an engraver, you know. Do you always run their errands for them? Who? Oh, never mind. Uh, where can you be reached, uh, Bobby? We'll be in touch. Yeah. Goodbye for now, Mr. Zvetik. 
Oh, uh, shall I wait around? No, no, thank you. I hope you have a very pleasant stay, Mr. Svedek. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Bobby. Yes? Who is this, please? This is Matthew Svedek. Who are you? Has Miss Kane been there yet? Oh, yeah. She just left. Why? Good. You are to play the free spender to the limit. Spend freely, tip handsomely, and play the races daily. I haven't picked a winner since Ben Hur drove sulkies. Just as well. What? The main object is to spend. But what if I win? Put the money aside. Spend only your own money. Is that clear? Uh, I get it. What about Bobby? What about her? She's my daughter and she's devoted to me. And? And nothing else. Discuss nothing with her. Nothing. Okay. Hello? Hello? I opened the sealed envelope Bobby's left with me. Two thousand dollars in twenties, fifties, and a few hundreds. I take out a few bills and put the rest under the mattress. I unpack, shower, shave, and assume the correct attitude of a guy with four hundred dollar luggage and a taste for the better things of life. I go downstairs to make my initial report to the FBI from a pay station, long distance to headquarters. Hello? Operator. Operator, I deposited my money. When do I get value? Hello? Oh, never mind, operator. Hello, Mrs. Reddick. Oh, hello there, Bobby. I tried to call your room on the hospital, but the cashier said she'd seen you go into the booth here. Yeah, I'm uh, getting some lukewarm tips on the horses. Oh, well, your money came back. Didn't you complete your call? <laughs> That's not my dough. My call was local. Oh, but how could... Operator's that... mistake, I guess. Well, let's go play the races. Hmm? I'm here to get rid of some phony money for the party. And I know now that pretty Bobby is assigned to see that I do it. And I'm sorry. Bobby and I repair to the turf club for refreshment and high horse strategy. Now, pick me a winner, Bobby. Not me. I can't pick daisies without getting thorns. Well, in that case, pick me two horses. A parlay? We'll lose everything. Well, it's only money. Or is it? <laughs> what do you mean, or is it? Sure it is. All right. Pick two. Well? Excuse me, senor. Senorita. Your pardon. Elsa? <laughs> I have difficulty to pay for my refreshments. The bartender says you are... <laughs> How you say, uh, loaded, eh? I can change that hundred for you if that's your problem. Uh, gracias, yes, uh, many thanks. Two fifties, okay? Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you. Uh, your deep pardon. Uh, gracias, gracias. You made a fast reputation for non thrift around here, Bub. Know who that was? Big Wheel on the Latin delegation. Well, the Big Wheel ought to go around with smaller change. Now, where were we? How's this for a hunch? Top secret in the sixth. Bomb blast in the seventh. Get it? Top secret, Bombast. See? Oh, well, it's Bombast. See? Bombast, no L. Oh, shucks. Well, try it anyhow. A hundred on top secret to ride on Bombast. How can we lose? Huh? Anyhow, it's fun. It's too bad. It can't be more fun. Why can't it be? First of all, I'm old enough to be your... Oh, you're not. Your big brother? Oh, maybe that. Bobby... Well, why are you staying so close to me? Well, Father told me you're his responsibility. Did he say in what way? He says you're an old friend. And a good comrade, huh? Sure. All right. We'll be good comrades too, right? Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> It could only happen in pictures, or to me. A nag named So What is the favorite in the sixth, but disqualifies for crowding, and Top Secret wriggles in first. <laughs> then, with the 12 to 1 take from Top Secret riding on Bombast, Bombast promotes himself first across the finish line. 
And I take my $3,000 profit in honest money, won with counterfeit money, and sneak away like a thief. It could only happen in the picks or in the fix. I part with Bobby in the lobby and go up to my room. Bobby in the lobby, the picks or the fix. The money is funny. Plenty of rhyme, but not very much reason than what I've gotten myself into this time. I unlock the door of my room and walk into an acute heart condition. Come in, Matt. How the dickens did... Close the door, friend. When did you get in? How did you get in? (laughs) Influence. Does the management know you're FBI? The FBI man at the day desk knows I'm FBI. The day clerk? We can't let an international conference go unpoliced. Oh. Well, I see you found the envelope of funny money. First place we look is behind pictures and under the mattress. Have you had a chance to look at the stuff closely? Uh Uh-huh. Pretty good stuff, isn't it? Frighteningly good. It's almost perfect counterfeiting. Yeah, I get the shakes every time I pass any of it. I can understand. Look... With these bad bills going into circulation, aren't we going to make a pretty bad impression on the Latin American monetary delegates? That's the big point with the Reds. How far do we have to go along with it, though? I told you, Matt. We've got to take risks this once more in the hope of breaking up this particular racket for keeps. Do I go on helping undermine confidence in our dollar right in the middle of a Pan-American money conference? Every victory costs casualties to our side. Suppose one of those sour bank notes... Uh Uh-oh. Who would that be? Well, I don't know. Who is it? Me. Oh, Bobby. Who's Bobby? May I come in? I want to talk to you. Oh, uh, wait a second, Bobby. Go someplace. Uh, the closet. Mm-hmm. I'll get rid of her for a couple of minutes. All right. No? Uh, just one minute. Hand me one of those fifties first. Uh, yeah. Here you are. Uh, don't let me smother, will you? No? Coming. I can't squeeze through a mere crack in the wall. Oh, Bobby, I'm not quite dressed. And I, I need change for this 50. You're going to a masquerade the size of the mint? I'll be a good kid and change this 50 downstairs, will you? Uh, set your shoes out, sir. I'll be glad to polish them. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bobby. Back in three minutes. All right, come on. Who did you say Bobby was? She's an engraver's daughter. Oh. She sounds cute. I better leave while the going is good. So long, Matt. Watch yourself. No sentiment, no. But here I am, waiting for Bobby King to come back, wondering if she'll break that phony bill for me. Because if she does break it, it means she doesn't know it's counterfeit, and she'll be in the clear. All of a sudden, one of the big issues of this fight I'm in is the corruption of young people like Bobby Kane. At least, Bobby Kane is a big issue with me, suddenly. So please, Bobby, change that bill. Change that queer 50 and Pan-American conference or not, Bobby. You'll be the big news to me. After all, I'm only old enough to be your brother. Yeah? Sign your shoes, mister. Well, come in, Bobby. Starring as Matt Sebetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. I wait for that door to open and for Bobby Kane to walk in with or without change from that bad $50 bill. If she has the change, she's passed counterfeit money for it. But she's proved she's innocent in any of the peculiar skullduggery going on around here lately. That's a mighty funny look you've got in your face, Bob. Did did you change the 50? Had a terrible time. Did you change it? Finally. Had to use your magic name, though. (laughs) Bobby. Hey, Matt. Well. I... I don't know. 
don't know why I did that. Let's see. It's only because you felt very big brotherly toward me all at once. What? What did you want to talk to me about? I got to worrying what you had against me. After all, you did say for us to be good friends. Comrades, I think I said. Yes. But I'm not worried now. Oh, me neither. And then it came to me in a flash of inspiration. If you're going to be alone for dinner, you might like pleasant as well as ornamental company. Like you? Why, thank you, Mr. Svedek. I'd love to have dinner with you. How nice of you to think of it. I had help. Dinner in the hotel dining room could be pleasant if people didn't keep recognizing me as the dude who parlayed two dogs into three grand that afternoon. All at once, the Latin delegation across the room explodes in excited voices and converging hotel officials. The rumor flies from table to table. Ruiz, the big wheel in the delegation, has paid the check for the counterfeit $50 bill. And suddenly, Ruiz and the manager are looking toward me, and Ruiz is nodding. I pay my check with good currency, and without waiting for the change, I hurry Bobby out of there. It's no good. On the terrace, Croft, the manager, overhauls us. Mr. Svedek, miss, if I may have a word with you. I'm taking this young lady home now. If I may speak to both of you, please. Go ahead. In my office, Mr. Svedek. All right. Now then, may I ask your name, miss? Why, yes, my name is... No, you may not ask. I don't mind, Matt. I mind. I mind very much. I want to know this man's business with us before we answer any questions at all. Very well, Mr. Savetti. Keep it down, Croft. You're getting shrill. I'll tell you then. For two days now, a flood of counterfeit money has been disorganizing things here. The Pan-American delegation is greatly disturbed, as am I. As am I. Get on with it. Tonight, Senor Luis, chairman of the group, was embarrassed when he offered us a bad $50 bill. He says you gave it to him in the turf club. I'll bet her that. I gave him two fifties in the turf club. Both of them good. Where's the other one? Really, he spent it. They're excellent counterfeits. If they're so good, it's a matter for experts to determine, not a head waiter or the cashier, don't you think? I'm sure the bill was counterfeit. Then somebody gave it to me counterfeit. You admit there are a lot of them around. Don't bother this lady and me about it. This lady, Mr. Sabetic, broke a different $50 bill today in your name. That's right. The cashier put it aside. We put aside all bills of $50 or over, with data concerning who passed it, when, etc. In the light of recent events, I must consider that bill suspect also. How absurd and insulting. Well, Mr. Savetti? Well, I sympathize with your predicament. I'm wanting to have the bill the young lady broke for me examined, here, in my presence, and by an expert. Not by you, not by your head waiter or some hysterical cashier... But an expert. Certainly. If I'm not mistaken, there's an engraving expert here in your community. I insist that you call him at once to establish my innocence. He can't establish your innocence. He can only establish that the bill is good or bad. If it is bad, like the other, we must presume the possibility of guilt. Call him. What's his name? Kane. Mr. Myro Kane. He's in the telephone directory. <laughs> Croft puts in a call for Kane. Then we wait for my accomplished red accomplice to appear. I'm not worried about the outcome. I can't lose. Then my old Kane arrives. He peers at us without recognition through his thick lenses. No introductions in so delicate a matter. Kane studies the bill for a few seconds. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, Mr. Kane? I wish I had a thousand such counterfeit bills, Mr. Croft. Then it's good? A certain amount of attrition from handling, which may sometimes be deceptive, but otherwise perfect. So good that I am willing to accept it as my fee. Fifty dollars, exact. By all means, Mr. Kane, and thank you. Thank you. Hmm. And to you, Mr. Savelli, my sincere appreciation for your sympathetic cooperation in this matter. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Croft. You're in a spot. Now go, Bobby. Thank you, Mr. Svetik. Mr. Svetik? I'd rather be alone. Thank you. I go for a long walk. I feel choked, smothered by the oppressive events of these two days. Kane's verdict is what I expected, of course. 
And I credit his wit in managing to pocket the evidence as well. It's Bobby that disturbs me. Is she hurt and humiliated by her experience tonight? Does she suspect me in spite of my vindication? Or is it all part of the act? Is she as red as her father? My head is whirling. I go back to the hotel and lie down, fully clothed, sleepless, beyond comfort. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, come in. Sure, come in. Thank you. Lock the door. Okay. Thank you. It was shrewd of you to contrive for me to be the expert this evening, Comrade Sovetic. Shrewd of you to have contrived to take the evidence with you as your fee, Comrade. <laughs> Thank you. That is not why I took it. Oh? I took it as evidence, yes, to be used against you by the Control Commission of the Communist Party, Comrade Sovetic. What are you talking about? Saying simply that it was no falsehood to tell Mr. Croft tonight that this $50 bill was good because it is good. Well, it can't be. But it is. Not if it's the one I gave Bobby to change for me. This is the one you gave her to change for you. And it is a perfectly good United States note, and I want to know why it is good. Why is it not counterfeit like the rest? All the bills I gave you were counterfeit. Why isn't this? That's ready. I don't... Where did you get a good $50 bill? I don't know. Perhaps the control commission will refresh your memory. I don't know how the bill got mixed up with the phonies, I tell you. Perhaps this will make you remember. I don't think the control commission will approve of unauthorized gunplay either, Comrade Kane. Now understand this. If I am seized by the police or the FBI, it will not be merely as a communist, but as a counterfeiter. I will not suffer that, Comrade Sovetic. I have a daughter who means much to me. Discuss this with that daughter who means so much to you. Ask her if she switched bills when she cashed the one I gave her. I have a good idea she'd do it. Why, I don't know. Answer it. I'll have you covered from my pocket. Bobby. Yes. Bobby. Why are you here? I was not there. I heard everything. Roberta. Everything. Oh, Bobby. Don't. Don't touch me. I heard you say not merely a communist, but a counterfeiter. Not merely a communist. Then you're not one of us. No, you're one of them. And Father. I'm going out of here now, Father. I'm going to the FBI. No. You're not, Roberta. Before it's too late for you. Yes. Roberta, I warn you. I'll shoot. He means it, Bobby. Bobby! Don't go, Roberta. Don't go, I warn you. Bobby, he'll shoot. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Oh, I hate them. The revolution, the party. I hate them all. them all, which means he isn't likely to report his suspicions of me to the party. Blood has told in my favor. Kane stumbles out of the room, dazed and broken. I sit on the edge of the bed, unnerved. It's my FBI contact. I tell him what's happened. I want the FBI to get to Kane before the party does. Kane can be salvaged for decent human purposes after he settled his debt to society. Then my contact tells me things. You see, Matt, when you found me in your room, I'd already substituted good money for all the counterfeit money that was still left. Figured there was enough of the bad stuff floating around. 
Lots of people stuck with that wrong green. We'll make it good. And cheap at the price. Nice work, Matt. Take a walk, get some sleep, and then we'll talk. I hang up. I take a walk for cleansing air. To walk the pure night. We've taken casualties, all right. Like Bobby. Decent, level, whimsical Bobby. I find the good people, but I always lose them again. That's how it's got to be. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. I'd like to remind you that the play you've just heard is firmly based in fact. Places, people, and other data have been changed to protect the innocent. Cases like the foregoing are not rare in the communist FBI conflict. This story, like others in this series, is based on incidents in the experience of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another exciting and revealing adventure. So be with us, won't you? Thank you.